This is your first video, and we're not going to waste any time going through stuff. So we're talking about uh, equations. Sorry. We're talking about exploring relationships today in class. The important thing in physics is looking at the relationships between objects and how those relationships change. So that's what we looked at in class. That's what we're about in general in physics. We're going to constrain those relationships to... Uh, pretty basic natural phenomenon. But we're going to look at relationships between two or more variables and how they change. That's what we're going to do all year. And one of the helpful things that we do for that, well, in, in class today we looked at the relationship between the height that we dropped an object from and the rebound height of that object. That was the relationship that we were interested in. I'll slow down writing. Sorry about that. The first thing you did was collect data. And here's just a sample data table. It's probably not going to look anything like yours. And it has far less data than your stuff has. So, when you collect data, you always need a procedure to collect data. When you write down your procedure, and you had a space for that today, you need to look at what you measured and how you measure it. That's the basic questions you're answering when you write a procedure. And you need to have a data table. That's how we're going to represent data. It's an easy way, it's a convenient way to keep everything straight. So, here's a sample data table. This is how data tables ought to look. I only have three trials in there, which is no big deal. Now, you'll notice about this data table that we have titled each column, and we've put units on the title of each column. That way you don't have to write down meters every single time. While we're talking about units, just to emphasize this that we, we talked about in class, our units in physics are always going to be uh, MKS, that's the system that we're using for physics right now. And you can get into college, it may get a little bit different. What that means is everything's going to be measured in meters, kilometers, or seconds. We'll use things like newtons, uh, we'll use things like joules, but those are built with meters, kilograms, and seconds. So everything that we do in here is going to have to be in meters, kilograms, or seconds. Those are very, very, very important. Make sure that when you make a data table, you title your column, you include units, and make it as neat as you possibly can. You get grid paper uh, in your composition notebooks, your quad-ruled composition notebooks that you need to have for this class as soon as possible. And it's easy for making data tables neat. Now, after we collect data, the second thing we do is graph our data. We're going to make a lot of graphs in this class, so we need to know how to graph data. And it's important to graph because it lets us see and it lets us quickly and conveniently quantify the relationship between variables. You're going to see how that works here in a second uh, as, we, as we do this graphing. So. I'm just going to drop that table in real quick. You don't have to write it down again. This is the table you already have. So this is my sample data. You have your own sample data. Um, but as far as building our graphs, we controlled the height that we dropped it from. So we're going to put that controlled variable, the one that we changed, the one that we physically manipulated, on the horizontal axis. The rebound height is what we were looking at to see how it changed once we changed the drop height. We want to see how that one's affected. We're going to put that on our vertical axis. Now, for the first little bit here, I am going to help you decide what goes on the horizontal and what goes on the vertical axis. But as time goes on, you're going to need to be able to see that. So, we're going to make a graph. So, we're going to take an 
create our graph. We're going to title it Dropped Height versus Rebound Height. That's a very boring name, but you know what? That name tells you exactly what's going on in this graph. That's an important thing. And if that's all you say about a graph is what you have on the horizontal axis versus what you have on the vertical axis, then you have a good graph title. You do not have to get crazy. We'll label our axes. And we'll include units because units are important. We'll put in a scale that makes sense. And then we'll graph our three points. We have made our graph. Once we graph these points, and seeing that it's a linear relationship, we need to draw a line of best fit. That's part of quantifying the relationship that we have. So we'll graph our points, and we'll draw a line of best fit. Now, for this line of best fit, it needs to go through our data. Some points on top, some points on bottom. Kind of every other point on top and on bottom. It's also important that our best fit line doesn't have to go through the origin. Our best fit line has to fit our data. Sometimes an intercept that's not zero means something and we need to figure out what that meaning is. Sometimes, just because of the way we collected our data, our best fit line for some reason doesn't go through the origin. What we want to see more is the trend. What we want to see more is how rebound height changes with dropped height. Don't force things through the origin. Just put your best fit line through your data. And hopefully... So, every single time we graph something, we have what looks like a linear relationship. We need to draw a best fit line because we're going to use that best fit line. Now, before we move on, let's look at the things that a graph has to have to be a good graph. So we need a title. That's important. We need to know the things that are on our graph. We need to label our axes, both of them, and we need to have units. Those units should match our table. The, the axes labels should come from our table. It makes it very easy. We need to have a scale that's appropriate. We want to fit uh, most of our data on the size of graph we have. I know I only gave you a half sheet of graph paper for our activity in class today. Your graph should have filled up as much of that half sheet of graph paper as you possibly could have. You need to graph, you need to plot your individual data points. You need to draw your best fit line. If it's linear, if it's not linear, and that's going to happen, we're going to talk about what to do with that situation. Um, and we're going to talk about that at the beginning of next week. So, these are the things your graph needs to have. And we're about to move on to the quantifying the relationship part. But before we do that, before we do that, just remember, we do not force our line through the axis. If it goes through the origin, sorry, if it goes through the origin, great. If it doesn't, great. Your best fit line doesn't care where the origin is. It cares where your data is. Now, step three, we're going to find the slope of our graph, and then we're going to use that to mathematically determine the relationship that's going on. Basically, by finding the slope of our graph, it lets us write an equation that tells us how the two things we graphed relate to each other. That's why we use graphs. And that's why we want linear graphs. We know what that equation looks like. So, I'm going to redraw the graph. If you already have it, that's fine. I'm going to go fast with that. Super fast redrawing the graph. Exact same thing we had before, the exact same scale. Exact same three points, and there's our best fit line. So, now that we have that, we need to find the slope. We're going to calculate it. 
And I know that some of you know how to do this in your calculator, and some of you are comfortable doing, on an ex doing it in an Excel spreadsheet. I don't care. We're going to do it by hand for a long time in here. It's a skill you need to have. Step one is to pick two points on the line. And this is really, really, really important. You will never, ever, 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 ever pick two of your data points to use in a slope calculation. Even looking at this graph, you can kind of see that these data points aren't exactly on the line. Once you draw a line of best fit, that line is representative of your data, and the individual data points are no longer important in any way. So when we calculate the best fit of our line, we're going to use points on the line to do that, not data points. Now, when you pick points, sometimes it's convenient and there are two grid intersection points, and you can use that. That's your first preference every single time. If you can get to a place where your line hits the corner of one of those boxes, perfect. And the reason it's perfect is because it's really, really easy to get the coordinates of that point. But sometimes, like the line that we have drawn right now, you don't always hit a grid point. So the other point we've picked is a, sort of a, a half intersection. It's on a line, and it looks to be exactly halfway between two corners. That's another appropriate point to pick. But again, you are never going to pick data points to find your slope. Once you have those two points, go ahead and write out their coordinates according to the scale on your graph. We are never, ever, ever going to count up and count over to calculate our slope. That only works when you're in sixth grade or whenever you did that. Because every time we do a scale, we could potentially change the counting up and counting over. So we don't count up and count over. We label our, our coordinate points. And step two, we use the slope formula to calculate the slope. The slope formula, the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's my change in y over my change in x. This shows me how the horizontal and the vertical relate to each other. So we'll plug in our points. And we're going to calculate our slope. So what we get is that our slope is 0.79. So before we move on with anything else, what this is telling me, just looking at what's happening, is that the rebound height is 0.79 or 79% of my dropped height. It's telling me how high up that ball bounced uh, when we dropped it. Now, we're going to want to quantify that in an equation. So because it's a straight line, we're going to use the um, y-intercept formula, y equals mx plus b, to write down the relationship between these two things. And we're going to use y equals mx plus b every single time. So, to show you what we do with that, let's write down y equals mx plus b. But, for our graph right here, the y is the rebound height. So we're going to call it hr. And we're going to write in our slope where m would be, and our x is our dropped height. So that's hd. And we're going to subtract because you can see that we have a negative intercept and it's really small. Now here's the deal with intercepts. We can, uh, we can guess, we can estimate based on our graph what that intercept would be. Here it's very small and it's negative. We can figure that out. But this equation tells me for the ball that I use to get this data what the rebound height will be for any dropped height x that I decide to measure, which is good because we can use this equation to predict the future behavior of the ball. Let's say you only measured 0 0.9, 0 0.6, 0 0.3. Let's say those are the only things that you measured for your ball. If you wanted to see what happened when you dropped the ball from 0.5 meters, you would plug 0.5 in for height dropped to get your rebound height. This equation is going to tell me what, for this specific ball, the relationship is between the dropped height and the rebound height. 
It allows me to predict the ball's behavior for any height that we, we have. So if you have not done all of this for the lab that we did in class, you need to finish it on your sheet because we're going to come back into class tomorrow and you're going to use the ball that you had with the height that I give you and predict how high up that thing's going to bounce. So if you haven't finished that, finish that now, bring it into class tomorrow.